Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be introducing you to AWS Amplify. If you're struggling trying to figure out whether Amplify is the right tool for your new project, then this is the video for you. You're going to learn what Amplify is, how it works, and some pros and cons of using it. So let's get started. So first of all, let's just start out with what is AWS Amplify. Now AWS Amplify is what I would consider to be a glue service that helps you build entire apps quickly. This can range to from front ends to back ends to full stack applications. And there's a whole bunch of different options with different technologies that are available to you. So for example, here are some of the different options if you're building a full stack application. If you're using this for a web application, then JavaScript, React, or Angular are obvious choices. If you're using Amplify for a mobile application, then React Native, Android, and iOS are some other good options. Now Amplify is primarily used as a CLI or a command line interface tool but there is a limited feature UI that allows you to do some administration tasks for some day-to-day -day activities. Now, the cool thing about Amplify is that it allows you to quickly add things like storage, authentication, things like monitoring and PubSub. Now, you don't need to know what Amplify is provisioning behind the scenes. So for example, if you add something like storage, you may be provisioning a resource from an AWS service without actually knowing about it. I really think Amplify is attractive because it focuses on delivering the functionality instead of relying on you having to know what AWS service to use to achieve that functionality. Now this may seem magical, but there's really not a lot of mystery to how Amplify does all these things. Because behind the scenes, it's just CloudFormation. CloudFormation is an infrastructure as code solution from AWS, and it allows you to write code to deploy your infrastructure out to the cloud. I have a whole video on it and I'll put a link to it in the description section below. But really there's nothing special going on. It's just CloudFormation. In terms of demystifying some of those different services that are at play here, let's take a look at a simple example. So there's a whole bunch of different functionalities that are offered that you can add to your application through a simple CLI command. Things like authentication, data store, managed hosting, managed users, and a whole bunch of other things that you can see here. This is a really impressive list of things that you can easily do with AWS Amplify, but behind the scenes, there's no mystery here. So things like functions, for example, are really creating AWS Lambda functions to run your code. For data store, really you're using Amazon DynamoDB. For authentication, Amazon Cognito. For APIs, you use a combination of AppSync and API Gateway. For storage, S3. For PubSub, simple notification service or SNS. For analytics, Pinpoint. For custom domains, RHEL 53. And for monitoring, of course, Amazon CloudWatch. I'm not going to go through all of them here, but you can get an idea of what Amplify is actually doing. They're just a layer on top of the complexity that makes your life a whole lot easier. Now, in terms of actually using Amplify, how do we go about doing that? Well, there's two ways, but primarily you're going to be interacting through the CLI. So what does that actually look like? Well, you really just need to configure a project using Amplify Configure. You follow the wizard and fill out some simple things, and then you can start adding your functionalities. So a simple one is just to add an API. Running the Amplify Add API command will launch a wizard where it asks you a whole bunch of different details about the API that you want to create. Things like the technology, whether it's GraphQL or REST, the name, some API keys, and a bunch of other details that are applicable to an API. Since you're running this through the CLI, a whole bunch of application code will be added to your project folder, so you can start making changes to your APIs directly through your editor. Once you're satisfied, you can run a deploy command. And finally, what Amplify will do is launch all of that delicious code into the cloud on AWS, and it'll result in an API gateway and a Lambda function combination to host your API. So the CLI is the primary option, but like I said, there is an administration UI that you can use to interact with Amplify as well. Now the admin UI is very pretty, I won't deny that. It's got a lot of useful features here that like you can see, and in the bottom there, it actually shows you the history of the CloudFormation templates being updated. There are some useful things here in the UI. So for example, the data model section allows you to use a studio style editor where you can drag and drop things and create data models that you can quickly import into your project as model files in your language of choice. You can also do things like add relationships between your data types and Amplify will behind the scenes create the right indexes in your data store to respect those relationships. And that's among many of some super neat features that are available through the admin UI. You can come here and explore this, but anything that you can usually do through the admin UI, you can do through the CLI anyways. It's really just a place to come to get a visual for what you're creating in the backend. And finally, if you're struggling to decide between Amplify and something else, then I hope this pros and cons list will help you out a bit. So starting with the pros, what is Amplify good for? Well, it's good for getting started quickly. Using the CLI and setting everything up is super easy, and you can run some commands that let you launch some pretty interesting projects with a whole bunch of infrastructure behind the scenes. So it lets you hit the ground running. 
Along the same lines, it's also great for prototyping. So if you want to build something out really quick, trying a new technology that you've never touched before, then Amplify is great for you. You can continuously experiment and throw away your work if you're not satisfied. Thirdly, it allows for some very fast development cycles. It's very quick to add a new functionality like an API or a database, realize that it's not useful anymore, and then quickly tear it down with a single command. There's no commitment to the infrastructure you're creating because it's so easy to remove it. And finally, it shields you from the complexity of AWS services. This is where a lot of people get stuck when they're on their cloud journey learning AWS. There's so many different services that do so many different things. And like I said, Amplify really focuses on the functionality instead of the underlying service that powers that functionality. So it's great because it helps you do a whole bunch of interesting things without having to know what's going on under the hood. Now that last point is a pro, but it's also my first con. You don't really learn about AWS services. And this is a really big deal because if you're using Amplify thinking that you're gonna get a lot of experience with AWS, then that's probably not what's gonna happen. You're just gonna get really good at using Amplify and not much else. You won't really realize what's going on with AWS until there's a problem and you need to go figure it out. By that time, it's too late and you're probably gonna be overwhelmed with all the complexity that you need to navigate. Second, collaboration can be frustrating. This can be an issue because among multiple teams, you're all having to share the same backend. Now there are some ways around this and AWS does have some workflows that make this a lot easier, but it's still something that was frustrating for me when I was first getting started trying out Amplify. Third, you can't really go outside the box. So if there's something that you need that's offered through AWS but isn't supported by AWS Amplify, then you're kind of out of luck. This really interrupts your workflow if you're using Amplify a lot. It really sucks having to do 99% of things as part of Amplify and 1% of things having to go into the console and doing it yourself. Now there may be a way around this, but it wasn't clear from the documentation and it may be difficult for beginners to the AWS ecosystem. And finally, the thing that scares me the most about Amplify is the potential for surprise bills. Now, like I said, Amplify will provision things behind the scenes without you necessarily knowing. If you do something like add authentication, for example, you're adding a Cognito user pool and there are fees that are associated with that. So you really need to know what the implications are of running different commands. I don't want anyone to get a surprise bill because that's not good for anyone. Now I should mention that Amplify primarily uses serverless technologies such as DynamoDB, AWS Lambda, and some other services. These services are primarily on a pay per use model, so it's not too much of a concern. However, there is a chance that if you add things without really realizing what's going on behind the scenes, you can get a surprise bill. So at the very minimum, set up a billing alert so you can get notified quickly and tear down your application if something unexpected happens. I have a whole video on setting up AWS billing alerts and I'll put that in the description section below for you to check out. I hope you learned a lot about Amplify in this video. If you're interested in learning more, you should check out part two on the right where I show you how to install and set up the Amplify CLI.